Hey y'all, let's take a look at stem and leaf plots. We're going to do this really quickly. Um, this is a relatively minor lesson, but let's look at just a basic example. Sets of uh, quiz, quiz scores for students. Well, there they are. Okay. Well, how do you find the mean of that? What's the method? Let's add them all up, right, and divide by the number there are. Okay, so that's the mean or the average. The mode means the one that occurs the most. All right, the median, the way, the way we figured that out, remember, is to line these things up left to right and, you know, in descending or ascending order, and then whatever the one in the middle is, that's the median. And if you have two in the middle, you just take the average of those two. All right, the range means the difference between the highest score and the lowest score. So that's just old stuff, but we're going to look at a little bit different way of doing these. And this is the way you would do it. Um, I'm not going to do the entire thing but this is how you would write a stem and leaf plot. What you do is basically take the uh, lowest one, looks like there's a 50 there, 56, and then any you other know, 50s in there anywhere? Oop, there's a 58. I think that's all the 50s. All you're gonna do is write. You get, you're thinking there are 50s, there are 60s, there are 70s, there are 80s, there are 90s. So you're just gonna represent that. This is called the stem part, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And I'm not, I'm not gonna do all these. But you would say, okay, there's a 56. So the stem of 56 is 50. Then there's the sixth. Of course, the 10s is here. And then there's a 58, and that would represent 56 and 58. You would read that and say, oh, I see that's a 56 and a 58. In the 60s, you could look down here. There's a 69. There's a 62. I'm going to do all of them. This would represent 62, and this would represent 69, and so on. And you would just keep going down, and you could use that information. It's just a little, you don't have to quite write quite as much there. That, those numbers get massive. You can just use a stem and leaf plot. And these are the leaves. They'll, they're kind of like, you know, they hang off the stem of the tree. Okay. Um, let's say, for example, you want to look at this and go, mark it 20 golf balls and measure the distances. There they are. I guess those are feet. Um, I hope they're not anything more than that. But anyhow, in which 10-yard stem... Did most golf balls land? Of course, they're yards. If it was me, it'd be 50 feet. So anyway, all right. When which 10 yards did most golf balls land? Well, you know, again, you, this you would set this up and go, okay. Well, if you look at this, all of these have 100. So I mean, all of these are going to have more than just a one. You don't want to put a stem that has a one, and then put 50, and then put you know a stem that has a one, and then put 65, you know, and so on. What you're going to do is you're going to have as much uh, as you can on the stem. Let's say, let's look at 50s. And let's see, there's only, looks like there's only 150. Let's go to 40s. 148, 141, 147, and so on. So what you would do here, instead of just putting a 1, you'd put a 1, 4, because that's what all three of those numbers have in common. So you'd put 141, 147, 148, and so on. The 150, you would just put, well, since there aren't any more 50s, you would just put, you know, the 15 here, then a zero, all right? And if you wanted to do 60s, there's a 65, 68, 62, 67, 69, and you would put, you know, this is going to represent the hundreds, it will represent tens, and there you have the five, the two, the seven, the eight, and the nine. You can, of course, you, just, you know how to read this. This would be 165, 162, that's how you would read it. And I won't bother to do any more of those. You would do exactly the same thing and just count which one of those 10-yard stems is going to have the most members in it. And there's your answer. All right. This example, find the range, median, mode, and mean of the data in this stem and leaf plot. We're not going to bother to actually do the entire thing. Well, I'm just going to run through how to do this. And um, just what's important is that you look at this number and you realize, well, this is the number 848. This is the number 849. This is the number 846, and this is 848, and so on. And you, the rest of these, of course, would be, let's say, for example, this one, 862, 863, and so on and so forth. And you do exactly the same thing. Once you've got all those numbers down in a list, uh, exactly the same thing you always do to find the range, find the median, find the mode, and find the uh, mean. So, same old thing. All right? Now, this is kind of weird looking. If you look at this, I know that numbers kind of wonky here, but what this is, is a stem and leaf plot, just like this. So in other words, you would look at this and go, of course, this is like knocked 90 degrees to the right, so oh, it's kind of strange. Okay, anyway, 
But you know, if you were to draw a stem and leaf plot, you'd, you'd draw yours more like this. You know, this and this, and this would represent, what two numbers would this represent here? 56 and 58, right? Okay, so same thing here. What you're gonna look at, this is called a histogram, and all you do is actually just to turn this stem and leaf plot 90 degrees to the left. And what happens is uh, you will, it's like a graph that you can create using a stem and leaf plot, and you just look at it a little bit differently, and you say, well, you know, let's say for this one, for example, ton of examples of, let's say these are test scores, quiz scores, excuse me. There's an 88, there's an 82, there's an 80, there's an 81, and so on. It looks like you can tell from this that the, the, you know, the range that has the most, I don't want to use the word range, but the, the group that has the most is in the 80s. Most kids of, out of any group scored in the 80s, okay? And you can look at this, the exact same thing, uh, this is called a histogram. You take, look at that uh, figure on the right, and all we've done on this histogram, on those figures, that stem and leaf, is we've turned it into a histogram. And you can look at this and go, okay, well, you know, th this is between 50 and 60. <clears throat> this will be a six and an eight, and there's, there are, you know, there you go, two of those. And then there's three of those examples, three scores that were 69, 62, 65, and you can read the rest of those. And, and you would use the same information, just like you always would, um, and frankly, if you want to use a calculator for these, heck, go ahead and do it. I mean, save yourself some time as long as you know what you're doing, okay? And here's an example you can uh, go on these. Let's say the speeds of 40 cars as they pass a checkpoint are shown, all right? In other words, there are the speeds of the cars, okay? Uh, how many had a speed greater than or equal to 25 miles an hour and less than 30 miles an hour? Greater than or equal to 25 and less than 30. This is where you would go, okay, well, how many is going to be this group right here, okay? And the answer to that would be four. There were four of them. Okay. The second question: What was the mode interval? In other words, which one mode most? Which one has the most? And the interval, according to this histogram, is between 35 miles an hour and 40 miles an hour. So third question is: What percent of the cars drove at a speed less than 40 miles an hour? So to find that, you're going to have to make a you know figure out how many drove at less than 40 miles an hour, then divide that by the total number of cars. Well, these are, it says right there, 40 cars pass. So we know it's gonna be something divided by 40. Well, this here is four. So we got four there, and we have 10 here, and 40 miles an hour, boom, that'll be 11. So you're just gonna have to add those together. That'll be 21 plus four is 25. You can reduce that fraction into five eighths, do the division, and you will get 0.625, which is 62.5%. That's your percent. All right? So, oops, almost blew that. Go ahead and uh, try A, your uh, uh, practice problem A, and then uh, I'll click it over here in just a second. So pause it. All right, that is your stem and leaf plot. That's what yours should look like. Uh, you need to have 100 as the one on the left and you need to have your tens, which would be 100, the first one would be 111, then 118, and so on, okay. All right, pause it and try B. Okay, B is 40. All right, B, now pause it and try C. All right, C is 137.5. All right, pause it and try D. All right, there you go. The three are 142, 149, and 150, and we'll do E, and we'll call it a day here. Actually, there's more, sorry. All right, E is 136.7. All right, pause it and try F. Okay, F would look like this. The number of protozoa. And that's what your history would look like. You're just going to convert that little stem and leaf plot to something that looks like this. Yours can be really rough; doesn't have to look perfect. Um, just make it, you know, approximately look like that. All right, try G, and we'll call it a day, except for H, of course. All right, G is 15. Okay, and H. Go ahead and pause that there. Fewer than 130 were 30%. So you had, in other words, you had, let me get this. What happens when you drop your tablet? Okay, we had four here. 
we had two there, there were five, six, and then three again. So totally, you've got six plus five is 11 plus six, 17, and then we have 20 total. They're wanting to know how many fewer than this, that's gonna be six out of 20, or three out of 10, of course, that'll be 30%, so there you go. Okay, y'all take care, see you next time.